Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. Re-review. We don't do a lot of re-reviews, but this one felt a little bit organic to me. Hop at your Galaxy Bowl. Why organic? Because today is Easter. March 31st. I come out here, I'm like, you know, I kind of want a hazy. I want a good hazy. I just got a box from Hot Butcher. I'm like, Galaxy Bowl, I'm like, I reviewed this before. I'm like, I should probably review it again. I think I should. I think it's been a little bit. I looked it up. I'm looking at it right now. Six years ago, to the day, to the day, March 31st, 2018, I reviewed this last. I didn't watch my old review. We're going to dive into it and just see what's what. So here we go. Uh, six years is a long time. Uh, beer changes a lot over time. The brewers change, processes change, hops change, all that stuff. So I personally am going to be very curious about what my old review says of this beer, whether I loved it or not. We'll see. Uh, ripe peach, sweet pineapple, and juicy passion fruit says on the back as Hop Butcher is wont to do. And this is their Galaxy Hop Double India Pale Ale. Galaxy Bowl. Classic, ultra, fantastical, jets the labeling. It looks like the label, I'm looking at my video of this. Um, it looks like I, actually, it's, I must have just moved down here to Jersey because I'm doing it in my kitchen. Actually, where the hell am I? Yeah, I'm doing it in my kitchen, I think. Anyway, um, I can't see the label online. I'm, I'm looking at Double Galaxy Bowl, which is a couple of years later, but I dig the label. I mean, <laughs> That, my friends, is what you want today's hazies to look like. When you crack them open, you want that super turbid New England ultra hazy. That's what you want. You know, butternut squash soup, potato leek soup, probably a little bit more towards that. Just rich, glowing um, yellow-orange with this milky kind of tone to it. With this nice index finger of infinitely tight, soapy, creamy head. Looks all the parts of beautiful haze. It's good nose. I mean, it is that fruit medley, that tropical, it's tropical fruit medley, tropical fruit medley that, you know, is galaxy. Um, nothing here comes off like it's going to be overtly sweet. It's a double IPA, it's 7.5%. It's probably going to be sweet. No shit, Sherlock. But usually you can tell there's going to be something a little bit to it. And it just smells like this might come off with the perfect level of sweetness, which would be nice. But outside of that, no big precursor to any kind of bittering. And really just this nice kind of melange. Um, uh, nice kind of uh, fruit medley. But with that tropical fruit being the leader in the clubhouse. You know, we're going to split it uh, split, split it down to half. We're going to be like, you know, 60 or, uh, yeah, 60% tropical fruits and 20% stone, 20% citrus, that kind of thing going on there. So definitely smells the part, definitely looks the part. Let's see if it tastes the part. Cheers, y'all. That's amazing. It's so good. It's so good. Mmm. Man, I cannot wait to go back and watch my other re review. Man, this is so good. I was drinking like a lot of people's attempts at a good triple IPA. That's how big and boisterous this is. What again? Seven point five, right? Seven point five percent double IPA. For me, that seems eh, it's flirting the line of single and double IPA. But man, bursting at the seams of flavor. That fruit just jumps out at you again. Leading in a clubhouse with that tropical fruit big huge kiwi vibes big star fruit vibes that's how it's kind of coming off to me more than the melon kind of vibe but you still get a nice peachiness to it a little peach ringy everything here has a little confectionery oranges a little orange julies everything here has that touch of lactose that a lot of hot butcher beers tend to have now i've always been of the mind even though i'm straight from the mouth of jeremiah is like we don't do that we don't put light it doesn't say lactose it's not in there in at this point they've you know, they get such widely distributed. That has to be the case for a couple of reasons. One, if someone lactose intolerant, they're blowing up over the beers. You can see it and read about it. That's not the case. So, what? How their magic they're using here? The that combination of brewers. I'm assuming it's like a brewer sugar, water chemistry, OD kind of com combination gives you those lactosey vibes without that milk sugar in there. 
and it works perfectly in this kind of beer. I think it's it's the best kind of base you can do for New England style IPA because when we talk about those hops, we talk about those big copious amounts of rich, delicious hops, and then move over, combine them with the mouthfeel and the kind of richness and sweetness of it. There is a cool little zippy bittering on this that I think is absolutely paramount. I like my drop out all bitterness beers. This is definitely in that adjacent, but there is this zippy, kind of zippy green, hot pellety thing, but it's not burny, but it's enough to jar you back to the right direction. You know, um, that's a bad analogy, but I was going to be like, you know, if you have a, one of those cars that autocorrects, if you start to drift out of lane, that's kind of what this is doing. This is having such, you know, this creamy sweetness, this fruitiness, this mouthfeel, this lushness, this softness, everything here is very happy-go-lucky, rainbow clouds of funness and whatever. You need a little bit of kind of just like a little elbow, a little stick to the chest to kind of jar you back so you're just not all one-sided on the beer. And that's kind of what the hops do in this. It kind of autocracks you get you back in that lane and that keeps this beer from being one-sided keeps this beer from getting just too much on the softer sweeter side of things absolutely paramount and honestly it makes probably about as good of if not one of the best hazies you'll ever have as far as my opinion goes it's mount rushmore status like all time all time yeah I get you all date. There's no date on here, which is weird for Hot Butcher. Their stuff typically has dates. I think that's actually the second review I've done of them. Second time I haven't got a date, which is very, very weird. Um, but as tends to be the case for breweries like Hot Butcher, their beers really don't last long on shelves. So I don't think you're really going to fall into the, into the, you know, shelf turd thing with their beers. It's kind of like, you know, certain breweries, Alchemist. You know, even even other half to a certain extent. Um, some other breweries, they tend to sit. You really need those dates on there, but I'm not going to get too hot and bother over it. It could be just a, a sh short run of non-date cans I'm getting here. I should look at the other ones I got. But anyway, back to beer itself. Mouthfeel. 10-10. Would eat, would drink. Um, you know, flavor profile from the hop side of things, absolutely out of this world. Um, you know, that bittering zip, I dig that. Some people just want no bitterness. I think it's absolutely crucial in a beer like this. And just that touch of that softness of the sweetness, that non-sharp uh, edge kind of sweetness that adds a soft confectionery to it, is all, all the goodness. All the good are belong to us in this, and stuff in this. Yeah, I don't know what else you want me to say. Is this one better? I mean, yeah, Mount Rushmore status all time. Like this might be one of, let's go all time. Like, like all time. It's it probably in the top ten best days I've ever had in my life. I, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. You go watch. I'm not, it's, not, it's not all rainbows in the hot butcher. They can have misses for me. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, value and availability. Their price point's usually not horrible. I, I want to say something like this would probably go for 16 bucks, give or take. In Chicago, out here, we're paying closer to 18 19 but that's travel cost. Lucky enough that Jeremiah sends stuff off, so thank you very much again, brother. Leave you with, if you like, well, you like this, if you like Hazy IPA. I'm just going to leave it at that, because honestly, if you like Hazy IPA and you drink this and you go, yeah, me, I kind of think you don't. I think you're lying to yourself, then. That's it. Done and done. Hot Butcher, have you been to their tap rooms? Have you been to the brewery? Have you had their beers? Have you had this beer? I really want to know your thoughts. Have you had the originals, like when they first started coming out? And then have you had it recently? How has it changed for you? I implore you to go back and look at my review in 2018, see if I speak any difference about this beer. There you go, reviewing the books. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of Hot Butcher right now. I'll see you next time. Cheers, y'all.